Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this great day that you've given unto us as a family. Father, we pray and commit everything into thy mighty hands, Father Jehovah. We pray for your protection, pray for your guidance, Father. We pray for the knowledge and the wisdom to know how to apply whatever we have been taught by our teacher Jehovah. We pray for her also, Jehovah, that you're going to bless her. All her undertaking, Father Jehovah. Commit everybody to thy mighty hands. Pray for your divine providence and for all the students, Father, and all the teachers that we are teaching us today, Father Jehovah, as we approach the end of our course, Father Jehovah. Take everything that we've learned before your honor and glory, Father Jehovah. Commit everything, believing and trusting in the mighty name of our Son Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes. Um so uh, last class we started off with Colossians. Uh, we had a brief introduction to the background of Colossae, and then um, you know we looked at the first two chapters, and uh, we covered some very important you know spiritual principles in the first two chapters. So now today we will uh, cover the next two chapters, and uh, you know Colossae being quite a short letter. Uh, we would be finishing it off today. Um, so uh, if we can have maybe one person uh, read out verse 1 of chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, if someone could read out, uh, you know, we'll get started. Yes. Yeah. Um, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Yes. So he uh, reminds the readers that Christ has been, um, that we have been raised up with Christ. Yeah, just as Christ was raised up, in him we too also were raised up. And because of this new status that we have, we must set our hearts on things above, where Christ is seated. You know, Rather than going on uh, uh, thinking about our lives as mere human beings on this earth with an earthly status, we stop thinking that way and we recognize that we have been raised with Christ. And so now uh, our status is completely different. And so in line with our new status, we choose to set our heart on the things which are above, you know, rather than uh, the, the things which are on the earth. Um, so, um, it, you know, this chapter begins with the word since, which means, you know, it's based on the entire argument that was already presented to us in the previous chapter. So what are the two main things that we, you know, we talked about in the previous chapter? Um, Paul points out to the Colossian believers that uh, their uh, status is very high. They were not, uh, they didn't undergo, you know, any circumcision procedure as little babies. You know, it was not a circumcision procedure which some human person did on them. No, uh, these Colossian believers have been circumcised divinely by Jesus Christ himself. And what's the circumcision that he did? He, uh, you know, it's explained to them that Jesus Christ cut off their entire old uh, self, you know, that 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 sinful, uh, that spiritually dead uh, spirit that was living in sin against God and living as a slave. That entire thing was just cut off, circumcised, done away with, crucified. And uh, so now they have risen up uh, in Christ to an entirely new way of life. Um, and so because of that, you know, they need to set their hearts on things above. The other thing that we, the other main point that we saw in the previous chapter is that um, earlier when, uh, you know, they were still living as those spiritually dead people cut off from the presence of God, even as they were living in that condition, at that time, they were um, linked, they, they were bound to human traditions and human laws and things like that, you know, uh, but now, now, when they died with Christ, they also automatically died to all the laws which were controlling them. Uh, because, I mean, uh, legal laws can only control a person who is, uh, you know, um, 
yeah um so the, what was i saying yeah the um, yeah uh, a, a person who is alive is subject to the laws and rules and regulations uh, which have been imposed upon the people in that place uh, but once the person is dead no law can control that person any longer because that person is dead so he's not only dead to the world he's also dead to the laws uh, so uh, you can't uh, go to a dead person and you know you know uh, prod prod him and say hey get up sit up you need to pay the taxes no once he's dead he no longer has to you know bother with all the income tax laws and all of that it no longer can bind him it can no longer control him so which is why you know um, uh, paul says um, in the previous chapter colossians chapter 2 maybe we can first look at colossians chapter 2 verses 11 and 12 which are talking about this divine circumcision and then after that maybe we can look at how these laws can no longer control a person who is now uh, dead um, so uh, if someone could read out for us colossians 2 11 to 12 please And then also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. All right. So uh, uh, we have now been, you know, crucified and buried with Christ. so it says so we are having been buried with him in baptism so we are um, technically dead people dead to the world dead to all the uh, rules in it which is you know reaffirmed at the end of the chapter so uh, if you could also read out colossians 2 20 and 21 colossians 2 20 and 21 If with Christ you died to the elemental spirit of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Regulations do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Yeah. So all of those rules apply to people who are living, but he says you people died to all of that. You know. I mean. Uh, so. In, in Christ crucified you. You were circumcised from all of that. So now you don't even need to follow any any of it. So which he so he says, why as though you still you know were alive in the world? Why as though you still belong to the world? Do you even bother to submit to those rules? Those things do not even apply to you any longer. Okay, is uh, is what he says. Uh, and then um, uh, yeah, j- just to address this issue that's mentioned here, um, unable to access the notes message. uh no preview available um so oh okay it says that uh, the file is in the owner's trash is it so which means i have somehow sent it off to the trash probably yes yeah i cannot we can we cannot access it there's a message that says that uh... oh my so maybe you know f- from my drive i have actually sent it into the trash uh, which is why it's no longer showing so which means i need to again do that um so yeah uh, without fail uh, you know uh, after the class i will again repost it and i'll make sure that it's sitting in my drive and hasn't gone into the trash or anything i must okay. have accidentally deleted it that must be yeah. the problem thank you oh yeah sure sure i'll i'll take care of that so we have uh, talked about how we just a minute please yeah we've talked about how uh, we have um, uh, died with christ now we don't stay dead we have also risen that's another fact so um, spiritually uh, we have now risen up along with christ and we now have a new way of uh, life so when we were those spiritually dead people earlier at that time uh, we were linked to human laws human traditions and all of that now that we have been raised with christ as a new uh, in, you know into a new way of life now we are linked to something else we are linked to a new way of life to a new set of uh, you know commandments that are given uh, we are in fact linked to a new person earlier we were linked to uh, satan and to sin now we are linked to jesus christ and our life is in him so in every way 
our status has completely changed. Now, physically, we are still on the earth. Physically, we are still in the human body. That is there. That fact is there. But at the spiritual level, everything has changed for us. So except for the fact that we are you know, uh, not yet inside heaven, uh, and that we are still living in these physical bodies, except for that, everything else about our life has completely changed. And so we choose to start thinking ourselves in terms of our new status in Christ by faith, which is why you know it says the Christian life is all about living by faith. Uh, so we no longer continue to look at ourselves as uh, people confined to the earth, confined to the way of life that the other people are confined to. No, now we have we realize that because of Christ, by faith, we can live in a new and uh, different way. So which is why it says in, you know, in verse 2, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Because now there has been a complete status change. So it would be rather foolish to continue um, setting our minds on the things which were, um, you know, pertaining to our previous status. We no longer have that. We no longer are those people. So it would be very, very foolish to continue setting our mind on those earthly things. Um, I'd like to bring in an example, you know, uh, just to kind of um, help us understand the great contrast between who we were earlier and who we are now. The example is in itself a rather extremely silly example. So, you know, please, you know, um, try to understand what I'm trying to convey. I'm not bringing in some new kind of a theology or a new kind of doctrine or anything. And it's a rather silly example. But it does bring out the great contrast between who we were earlier and who we are now. OK, so picture of fish, a little fish somewhere in the ocean. Um, you know, it's somewhere near, near the ocean, uh, deep down near the ocean bed. And then you have all these, uh, you know, um, water uh, plants, the ocean plants down there. And this thing is kind of swimming around over there, you know, on the ocean bed. And it eats the larvae which are there, you know, on um, among those plants. And uh, that's, that's just basically its existence. That's all it knows. All it knows in life is this ocean life. Where it swims, am swims among those, you know, reeds and plants and all of that. It eats the larvae over there. That's it. That's just its life. So, you know, to 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 elaborate on this rather silly example, let's picture this fish crucified and raised up to an entirely new status and identity, a human identity. Let us say. So earlier, all this fish was was a fish. All it knew was the ocean life. Now. It has been um, uh, raised up to a new life, a new identity. And now its identity is that of a human being. Now just think of the contrast between ocean life and life, the human life that humans have. It's such a huge contrast, right? A uh, 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 life in the ocean, at the ocean, on the ocean bed is so restricted, so minimal. Life that humans live so elaborate they can operate in the water they can operate on land and my goodness they operate at a high at a much higher level than little fish the main problem with this example is that you know we think we for in the example we would have to kind of maybe think more in physical terms uh, whereas what has happened to us um, is uh, more in the spiritual realm uh, so there are great restrictions in this example but Think of the great contrast that has now resulted. So now this fish is being told, don't just think of your life you know, as just the ocean life. Start thinking of this much bigger life that you have been given. A human identity is what you have now received. You know, so, so start thinking and operating along those lines. So for the fish to actually absorb this and start walking in this new way of life, is going to take a radical mind change. You know, it's going to be involve a lot of renewing uh, of its mind, where it starts thinking at a much higher level. And that is something, you know, something similar to that has happened to us. Human level is so restricted and so minimal 
compared to the life that we now have in Christ, no longer are we just thinking earthly realm. Now we've uh, been promoted into the heavenly realm, a life which is linked with Christ himself. You know, so we would now have to start thinking at a much higher level. Now, when we start thinking in this way, everything that the scripture is asking us to do starts making more sense. And we also start realizing that, yes, I now actually have the capacity to live in this new way. So it, it, it is so important to understand that there's a very radical change, a very great, amazing transformation that has occurred when we step out from this earthly thing that you know to which we were restricted until now and now we have been promoted to a whole new realm altogether and we are now being asked to live out this new life by faith okay so it's like it's something that is um, extremely radical that has happened to us and uh, the scripture asks us to start renewing our mind and aligning ourselves to this higher way of life. Okay, so uh, so now you know, thinking along these lines of a little fish in the water and a human, completely whole new level. Just kind of thinking along those lines. You know, um, let's look at verse three and verse four. Uh, if someone could read out for us uh, verses three and four, please. So you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So at the moment, physically, yes, it's very true. We are still like on this earth. Uh, we still, um, you know, the way Jesus walked into that room, uh, you know, without even entering through the door, he just literally walked in through the wall. Uh, that, you know, because of his resurrected body. So he did that. Now, we cannot do that. We still have not received our resurrected bodies. So yes, there are a whole bunch of uh, restrictions that we still experience in the natural realm, in our physical bodies. But oh my goodness, in our inner person, in, in our spiritual you know, being uh, inside, which is now a new creation, you know, because the old, that old spiritually dead thing that was crucified with Christ, it was, it was circumcised, it was cut off, it was put off, it was done away with. Now, we are a new creation. So in our spirit being, we are operating at a whole new level. And our life is now hidden with Christ in God. You know, uh, Paul, when he's talking about this in, a, in, a, in another place, he says, I no longer live. Christ lives in me now. He, Christ lives through me, you know. So it's, a, it's an entirely um, higher level of existence. So it says over here, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And in fact, because of this, you know, because right now you're still, I know, because now you're experiencing the first level of this new existence, this new life in Christ. One day, in fact, it will it'll be brought to completion when, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You see, on that day, we will appear with him with resurrected bodies, just like him. Because when the second coming happens, you know, that's when basically when we will all be resurrected. The unbelievers will be resurrected for, you know, it, uh, for eternal death and damnation. We, on the other hand, would be uh, eternally resurrected to spend our lives in him. So what is what we are experiencing in verse three is the first phase where our life is now already hidden with Christ. We already begin to operate in uh, the spiritual realm in, you know, in our new status. But when it comes to physical things, yes. Uh, that we will have to wait for verse 4, which is in the future. Because when Christ appears, we will also appear with him in glory, with new resurrected bodies that he has given us. So these are all the, these are all, this is the background that Paul, you know, has tried to establish in chapters 2 and 3, uh, the beginning of chapter 3. And now based on that, he says, now because of these realities, these established realities, Therefore, he says, you need to start living in this way. Verses 5 onwards, he starts explaining the practical implications of this new lifestyle, you know, this new status that we have been given. 
Uh, so um, if we can have someone read out verses 5, 6, and 7, please. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covet covetousness, which is Id Id idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived when you lived in them. Yeah. Now, it, huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, verse seven. Yeah. I, you want me to verse? Yeah. Yeah. If you could just very sorry, you could just read verse seven again. In which you yourselves once mm. walked when you lived in them. Yes. So you you see, uh, when we had this only our earthly status, um, we were like everyone else. The same way they walked in the earth life, we also walked in the earth life. We didn't know anything better. We didn't. We could not access anything better. So the same way they walked, we also walked. The same method, the, the, the same coping mechanisms that they used, you know, to cope with life, with everyday life on this earth. We also used the same coping mechanisms. We didn't have anything better. But now, uh, because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, because now we have received a new status, it says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. We no longer have to use those coping mechanisms to cope with everyday life. Now we've been given a better uh, you know, way of living. We are now able to live in a uh, better way. So uh, you know, to go back to that uh, uh, fish example, earlier all that, could, all that fish could do is live exactly the way all the other fish are living. It could not aspire to anything higher. But now it's a transformed fish. So now. It's not supposed to live anymore the, exactly the way the other fish are living. It's now supposed to start uh, entering into its human identity. You know, in, in, that, in that example we used, we were looking at the contrast between fish and humans. So now this little fish is going to start trying to put on its human at much higher level characteristics and start walking at that level. So, you know, it's going to take a lot of renewing and it's going to take a lot of um, in fact a lot of divine activity would have to happen for it to be able to operate at this new level but the thing is the starting point is that it needs to realize that it should no longer allow itself to be held down by the earthly restrictions and limitations the people of the world they say this is the only way to live you see, you have to lie. If you don't lie, how are you going to manage? Because the world is, you know, evil, corrupt. You got to lie. If you don't tell lies, how will you survive? And the same way, the world will say, you see, there are these the, the sinful things. Uh, you you have to do them because that's the way of the world. If you don't operate along these earthly principles which are established, how do you live? How do you support your family? How do you manage? You see, they're, 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 they're literally restricted to that level. But now we need to understand that we have a higher level of life because we have Christ on our side. Our life is now hidden in Christ. So we no longer have to be this helpless people. We can now live in a completely new and different way. So in the same way the fish has to tell itself, I will no longer be held down, tied down by the, by the ocean life. I can now progress to a higher level of life in the same way we believers, we tell ourselves, I will no longer be held down, tied down by this earthly things. You know, um, it talks about them. It talks about um, impurity and uh, dis evil desires and greed and idolatry. These are the things which are holding me down, binding me and, and restricting me to this earthly life, which I, I don't need to be part of any longer. I don't have to have an earth life anymore. We can. I can now have a new way of life in Christ. So I need to be. Uh, I can now operate at a higher level, and so I choose to start thinking along the um, new way of life. You know, I start thinking along those lines. Um, so if, if yeah, if so yeah, if someone can uh, read out verse eight.
verse 8. Yeah. It reads, um, But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as this, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Ah, if you could also read out verses 9 and 10, please. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. So, you know, uh, the people who are living over here and are restricted to the earth life, uh, because they, their life is not yet hidden in Christ, they, uh, they have to resort to these things. They indulge in anger and rage and slander. Uh, and uh, then it, it talks about uh, lying. You know, it says they lie to each other. So these are all the old self and its practices is what it says at the end of verse 9. So, you know, these are the old self with its practices. But we no longer have to be tied down by this old life because, you know, that was literally crucified done away with. It was circumstanced and taken away. And we no longer have to you know, follow the practices which are linked to this old life. You know, so, um, so which is why it says, do not lie to each other. So for an unbeliever, if he does not lie, he's probably going to get himself into serious trouble. So the only way out for him is to bend the rules, to compromise, to cheat. We don't need to do that. We can take a stand and say, no, I will maintain my integrity. I will stay truthful and I will be honest, even though I am in this very, very tight situation. Yes, if I were to lie and deceive my you know, um, employer, I could maybe escape. But no, I will not do that. Why? Because my life is now hidden in Christ. So Christ will now take care of my life. He will take care of you know, whatever I require to be able to live in a new way. And so this believer chooses to take a stand. Earlier in his past life, he too used to lie and deceive. But now he decides, no, 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 this is not the way out. I will take a stand and I will choose to be honest. And then he will wait and see you know, how the Lord will work out this situation for him. So now he's not operating, you know, using our example, he's not operating no longer in that, in that little restricted fish life. He's now advanced to a higher way of living because he's no longer restricted to the ocean. He's now operating at the land level. You know, he's at, at, a, at in a whole new realm. Uh, it's it's a, it's a very higher, much higher way of life. And so, God, Jesus Christ, in whom his life is hidden, Jesus Christ will help him. He will back him up. He will, you know, uh, help him. And so, this person begins to discover, you know, their mind is now being renewed and they begin to discover, oh, when you, when you live in this new and different way, Jesus Christ actually comes through for you. He actually helps you to live out in this new way. And so he begins to discover that this new way of life, you know, this God's will is pleasing and it is, you know, it is good and it is perfect. He starts discovering the, you know, the reality that is contained over here in your Romans chapter, um, you know, 12. Uh, so, yeah, in fact, if we could, you know, someone could read out Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 2. It reads. Sorry, 11 to... Uh, no, Romans, ch Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2. Um, be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be, re be, tra be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may know the... That ye may know, that ye may know, able to test, sorry, and approve God's will, 
his good pleasing and perfect will yeah so the person begins to practice god's will starts putting god's will into practice you know because they have decided you know i'm not going to think in the old way in the, in the restricted earthly way i can now think at a much higher level and so they start al aligning themselves with this with, with their new identity and who they are when they start doing that and they start test testing and practicing god's will they make this amazing discovery that god actually comes through for them there's a whole new level of operation at which you can you know operate now and they begin to discover that this will of god is good and acceptable and perfect so it's like a new revelation it's a whole new way of life that they start learning you know so um it takes time to kind of grasp these things you know just to go back to that uh, rather you know uh, limited example of that fish you see that fish the first day it discovers and it and it and it and it is told this fact that now it can actually go up to the surface of the water and directly breathe in the air it's like unbelievable it's something that it's never ever done you know it's always you know um, you know uh, swallowed the water and then uh, the oxygen in the water is absorbed by the gills and all of that process so now it's being told you can actually go up to the surface of the water stick out your you know uh, uh, mouth and your nose or whatever you can actually breathe in directly direct, you can breathe in the air directly it's something unbelievable it's something that no fish has ever done and now this fish is being told you are now transformed you've been raised to a new way of life do this so the fish literally just sits over there maybe for for a few days absorbing this new truth that is being revealed to it about its identity is this something that i can do is it really i can i live a life like this all the fish around me are living in a different way they're living the restricted ocean life i can actually go up to the surface and do this breathe in the air directly is it even possible and then it says no 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 this is the truth so you know it actually goes up to the surface to test it out to put into practice what it has been told and it discovers oh my goodness i actually did that i was actually able to do that and it begins to realize that there's a whole new level at which you can operate so you know what Re romans chapter 12 1 and 2 is telling about it's it's something that you're literally walking into on a daily basis on a daily basis you choose to offer your body as a living sacrifice you know it's something that people all around you are not doing they think that if you do something like that that's like death you know you're literally dying i mean uh, you you're giving up your interests your uh, your your literally killing yourself is the way the world sees it and, this, and so they for them it, it's like a big no but you are now beginning to walk in this new way of life and it's just so, too radical it's just too different but because you believe in the scripture because you believe in this jesus christ who is telling you these things you decide okay fine i'm going to test it i'm going to try it out i'm going to practice it and so you start aligning your mind with the mind of christ and you say okay this literally looks like death what god is asking me to do he's asking me not to lie and if i don't lie i'm finished i'm literally going to be a living sacrifice you know is but i will do this i will choose to do this and as you do it your mind starts getting renewed and you make a amazing discovery that this god that this will of god is actually good and acceptable and perfect so your life starts changing you start becoming this new person that you were meant to be and then because of that like it says over here in the in this verse uh, you have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator so without your realizing it you start looking like your creator you start becoming like him into his image why because gradually you're grasping this very very radical new truths I mean, you know, you talk to anyone on earth, and they say, you know, I'm going to be a sacrifice. They'll say, good, you know, you're killing yourself. You want to die. Your future is going to die. Your hopes and dreams are going to die. That's what happens when you become a sacrifice. But you're saying, no, 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 no. I'll be a living sacrifice, and Jesus Christ, in whom my life is hidden, He will take care of me.
he will give me his life he will see to it that my life is made that things are taken care of you know out of his spiritual riches he will cater to me so it's all right for me to die on a daily basis and the other person you know to he will not even understand what you're saying because this is an entirely new way of life and we start to you know live at this level so we no longer have to be people who are you know living in um, immorality impurity uh, we no longer have to give in to anger and rage and slander we no longer have to operate at this low level in which we were earlier because now we have an entirely new identity and like this little fish on a day by day basis we are absorbing these new truths we saying oh my goodness is it really real can i actually live like this let me try it out let me do it and so we start doing romans 12 1 to 2 and we start discovering that yes it is possible to live at a whole new level in a whole new way and that is why you know we we do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices take it off that was circumcised it was put off it was done away with you don't even have to put on that old self again so take off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self and this new self how does it start becoming more and more new it starts learning it starts getting renewed in knowledge and so even as it gains it's even it's even as it starts learning new things it starts trying out these new things and practicing them so you know maybe after the first one month this now this little fish it now learns a new thing oh i can actually go out onto the land and sit over there for 5 minutes something that no fish could ever do okay it's very very bad example please i mean you know understand the restrictions of this of this example that i'm trying to you know use but i'm just trying to bring out the radical difference there is between ocean life and you know the human life and in our case this earthly life and the heavenly realm where we are now seated with christ extremely radical you know difference between the two and uh, so now this fish has to take this next next step of faith in our example it actually has to you know go to the beach and actually get out of the water and you know sit over there for 5 minutes it's like something extremely radical for that little fish to do and now you know in the same way uh, christ is now asking us to step into new things you see he's given us this new knowledge about who we are we don't have to operate the way the rest of the world does living in impurity and immorality and being stuck uh, you know in, in this very restricted way of life we can operate at an entirely new level but it takes faith to do that so you choose to trust god and say okay lord you're telling me uh, not to live the way the other people are doing yes i will trust you and i will actually walk out in faith and try out this new thing that you're telling me to do and even as you start doing it he gives you the power that you need to be able to live in this uh, new way of life and so your mind is getting renewed in this new knowledge of who you are this new identity that you have and even as you start practicing this new knowledge of your new identity you start becoming into the image of your creator okay so that's basically what is being explained to us in verses 9 and you know 8 9 10 james put this puts this so beautifully you know so what james is telling us is exactly uh, what we are seeing right now in colossians chapter 3 uh, verses 8 9 10 so james chapter 1 22 to 25 if someone could please read out that for us um james chapter 1 verses 22 to 25 and you know think about all these things that we've been talking about and you know read uh, even, as, even as you're reading those verses think about all this uh, this this concepts which we have been meditating upon right now so james chapter 1 22 to 25 james 1 22 to 25 do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves do what it says mm. anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like 
but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. You know, I mean, amazing passage. Um, it says, don't just listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Because if you're just simply listening to the word and you're thinking, oh, fine, you know, this is it. Now I'm changed. No, you're deceiving yourself. You also got to do what the word is saying. It's not enough to just hear it. You got to do it. It's, it, it's, got, to, it's got to start becoming a reality in the way you're living on a daily basis. If that is not happening, and if you're just simply listening and gathering knowledge in your head, then you're deceiving yourself. You are not really becoming that new person. So it says over here, do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourself. Do what it says. And then it goes on to give this amazing example. It says, anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. You know, to go back to our little fish example, the fish takes a look in this new mirror it, which, has, which it has been given and it sees itself as a human radical thing, radical change. I mean, it's, it's just this little fish in the water, but it looks in the mirror and says, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human. You know, it's like a shock for it to see what it is. And then what does it do? It just goes away and it forgets what it is. And it's pointless. It's been given a new identity. It's been raised to a new way of life, but it forgets for who it is. And it continues to live a ocean life, that restricted you know, ocean life on the ocean bed. And that's very, very sad. So we believers, we look into the scriptures, the, you know, the mirror over here is the scripture, the word of God. When we look into it, we see this new status that we have been given. And we realize, oh my goodness, we are no longer just this, you know, like the other humans who are, you know, living restricted lives. We are meant to operate at a whole new level because we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. We look at that and then we walk away and we forget who we are and we continue to live the earth life, you know, with all its restrictions and all its sinful coping mechanisms when we can actually, you know, we can cope with this life at a much higher level in Christ instead of doing that. We go back to our old way of life. What's the point? We have deceived ourselves and nothing has changed in our lives. And uh, so it says over here, but whoever looks intently, no, not just, you know, take a peek now and then and then forget what you have seen, but looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it they will be blessed in what they do. You are meant to have a blessed life. You are meant to literally live as though you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. And you know, which we actually are. But most of us don't live like that because we are not looking intently and understanding on a daily basis who we are and living at that level. Yes. At the intellectual level, we accept that we are seated with Christ, but our lifestyle doesn't show that because uh, we have set our mind still on earthly things. We have not unchained ourselves from these earthly things and we have not set our mind now at that higher spiritual realm. And see, it says over here, do that. It says, look intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. Because this, 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 no, these scriptures which are talking about you, they can unchain you from this restricted life that you've been living. You can be released to live at a higher level of freedom, you know, where you're no longer being held down by all these unclean uh, things which are holding you down. You can operate at a higher level of freedom. And so if you continue in this new way of life, not forgetting who you are now, but, you know, living it out in your everyday life, it says, they will be blessed in what they do. You will be blessed in every area of your life, you know, in your job, in your career, in your family life, in your relationships, in your, uh, in, in your you know, role in society. You will be blessed in all that you do. 
so we are being called to something much higher you know so this is something that we need to grasp as a reality we need to look into the mirror of god's word take a very very good look at who we are and once we realize who we are we start operating at that level you know um if um, okay we still have 4 minutes so just to you know um, give another example something that just you know spoke to me a lot uh it really helped me to start seeing myself differently um you know if you look in uh, google you know you have all these pictures uh, images you know i'm sure you must have seen them you have a cat sitting in front of a mirror and when it looks in the mirror on the in the, in the reflection it sees a lion and uh, you know you have a, you have a script a bible scripture written next to that um, you know picture and it says you know it says like you know look at yourself in a new way or something like that i mean you know you have all these different things written over there next to that image so you know you you have the cat sitting over there and it's looking at its reflection and it sees itself as a lion and you know uh, we are told it's the way christian should be you should no longer see you see yourself as you know a common house cat you got to see yourself as a lion but actually if you look at that picture it's it's bluff right it's fake it's fake that cat is still a cat and uh, it's just thinking that it is a lion but in reality it's just a house cat and that is not what christ has done for us no 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 you are not a house cat anymore you actually are a lion and so when you look at when you look into the mirror of god's word what you're seeing the reflection that you're seeing is of an actual lion you know you're not you're not faking it you're not a house cat telling yourself i'm a lion i'm a lion i'm a lion no you've been transformed into actual an actual lion so you know this this um, i i i just accidentally came across this you know in i think it was in uh, youtube uh somewhere out there in uh, in one of these um, um one of these national parks i think in africa or something uh, they had put up this large um, you know mirror kind of a thing not using glass uh, but you know because the animals can harm themselves some kind of reflective material it's almost like an actual mirror they've put this over there and you have this bunch of lions walking up to that and they're like you know very puzzled because they can see another lion over there in the reflection and they're kind of going behind the that mirror and they're looking to see whether there's a there's a lion hiding over there and the lions are like very confused and they're looking at this reflection you know what they're looking at they're looking at themselves they're seeing who they are they are not house cats they are lions so when you look into the mirror of god's word please look at who you actually are in jesus christ you are operating at a whole new level all the other people around you are house cats they are restricted to this to this earthly way of life but you even though on the out you outward you know appearance you still look like a house cat you have not received your you know your resurrected body you are not in the in the heavenly realm yes there are still human restrictions but at the spiritual level you really are you know in the image of christ you really are seated with him in the heavenly realm so when you look into the mirror of god's word please don't see uh, a house cat see who you are in christ and realize that you're not faking it you actually are that new transformed person because you were made into a new creation the old is gone behold look the new has come realize who we so so when we start seeing ourselves like this then this whole new way of life that you know that this new testament goes on talking about starts making sense because now you realize oh i am no longer a house cat with all the house cat restrictions i really am a lion okay again these are all just examples that i'm using please it's not some new doctrine that i'm bringing in just very very weak examples that i'm using to try and bring out the um, amazing transformation that christ has actually worked in us and he wants us to be living at that level all right so so these are very very weak examples that are being used to bring out an a very amazing reality about who we are in jesus christ all right uh, so okay so therefore 
you know, uh, we choose to take off the old self and its practices. We are no longer confined to that. We choose to put on the new life, which is being renewed in knowledge. And because it is being renewed in knowledge, it starts becoming into the image of its creator. OK, so um, yeah, so that was up to verse 10. Uh, we will look at verse 11 onwards once we get back from our break. So at uh, 10 o'clock, you know, if we can all log back in. Thank you.